Hello Foundation personnel, it's Knox, and today we'll be looking at yet another SCP-001 proposal. Today's proposal is a bit longer than some of the ones we have recently looked at, so pay attention if you want to hear everything that this one has to say. Without further ado, let's begin. Dejoric Dematic's Proposal 36 Item Number SCP-001 Object Class Humanoid Threat Level Green Circumstantial Red Containment Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Instances of SCP-001 are to be contained within standard humanoid containment modules. Under no circumstances are any instances of SCP-001 to be stored at the same site, allowed to interact in any manner, or to be made aware of information regarding other members of the group. Personnel assigned to any single SCP-001 subject are not to be made aware of the other instances of SCP-001 or the connections among them. SCP-001 subjects are not to come in direct contact with any other anomalous items outside of approved testing. Revised 2005 Special Order A-1130-X In light of the events resulting in SCP-001-05's death, the use of SCP-001 subjects in the neutralization of anomalous objects is hereby prohibited. All care is to be taken to keep SCP-001 subjects alive and unharmed. Recovery and containment of SCP-001 subjects is to be considered highest priority. In the case of a death event, Ouroboros Protocol is to be initiated as soon as possible. Description: SCP-001 is a group of 36 individuals, designated SCP-001-01 through SCP-001. 001-036. There is no apparent pattern in terms of ethnicity, gender, age, or religious affiliation amongst SCP-001 subjects. SCP-001 subjects display no anomalous properties of their own. However, any anomalous item, entity, or property brought into close proximity with an SCP-001 subject will be greatly modified from its original properties. Most often, this will result in a lessening or total nullification of anomalous properties. These properties, not nullified, will be changed so as to display consistency between objects of similar properties. All of these effects are instantaneous and will occur without any input from the subject. The area of these effects will expand in when multiple SCP-001 subjects are brought together, as well as the intensity of changes. Multiple SCP-001 subjects are capable of nullifying anomalous effects without being aware of the presence of said objects. All subjects of SCP-001 seem to be instinctively aware of information regarding other SCP-001 subjects, generally the total number of the group and details of between 1 to 3 individuals. This knowledge is vague, making locating uncontained subjects difficult. The death of an SCP-001 subject will result in the manifestation of multiple anomalous entities and phenomena in the area. These manifestations will be of such a scope that traditional containment measures are unfeasible and will result in significant casualties and collateral damage. Contained SCP-001 subjects have claimed that this is a result of the deceased individual's absence letting things through and that further events will be more severe as time progresses. In addition, contained subjects have claimed that any deceased individuals will be replaced by a newborn bearing the appropriate properties. No such individuals have yet been located. See Document 001-EX for a list of notable modifications to items by SCP-001 subjects. A full listing of all nullifications may be found in Document 001-N. Addendum 01. Known members of SCP-001 are as follows. For the sake of brevity, while I read through this chart, I'm going to skip the categories. SCP-001-01. Jewish German. Male. 94. Contained. Currently in induced stasis to prevent death. Numerical identification code tattooed on left forearm. SCP-001-02. Tamil, female, 88, contained, 
was pregnant at time of containment, child born without incident, currently under Foundation Watch. SCP-001-03, British, female, 91, contained. Subject was British Army nurse, recorded as dead in 1943. SCP-001-04, Han Chinese, male, 97, contained. First subject to disclose information regarding other subjects to the Foundation. Taoist priest of the Quan Zen School. SCP-001-05, Pashtun, male, 101, deceased. Subject died in containment. See Incident Report 001-05-EX for further details. SCP-001-06, Italian, female, 39, uncontained, originally recovered from a hostel in Budapest. Subject escaped containment eight days later during breach at Site-90. Current whereabouts unknown. SCP-001-07, Polish Argentinian, female, 52, uncontained, in possession of GOI-16, the Horizon Initiative. SCP-001-08, Russian, male, 5, uncontained, in possession of unknown individual or group. No family members have been located. SCP-001-09, Aboriginal Australian, female, 31, uncontained, in possession of GOI-16, The Horizon Initiative. SCP-001-010, African American, male, 28, uncontained, in possession of GOI-16, The Horizon Initiative. SCP-001-011, Nigerian, male, 45, contained. SCP-001-011, SCP-001-011's family was present during its recovery. SCP-001-011's eldest son offered armed resistance to Foundation personnel despite SCP-001-011's objection and was neutralized. Remainder of family administered Class A amnestics. SCP-001-012 Arabic Female 14 Deceased Subject was killed by members of GOI-03, the Chaos Insurgency, during the recovery effort. See Incident Report 001-012-RCEX for further details. SCP-001-013, Korean American, female, unknown, uncontained, actively frustrating recovery efforts. SCP-001-014, Navajo, male, 23, contained, was recovered by Foundation personnel after contact had been made between the subject and SCP-1295. See document 001-EX for further details. Addendum 2. SCP-001-01 through SCP-001-05 were initially recovered on 1944 in Jerusalem during investigation of supposed miracles and other anomalous events in the area by HMF SCP. SCP-001-01 through SCP-001-05 were found in the care of three individuals, classified as POI-1458, POI-1459, and POI-1460. Said individuals possess possible ties to GOI-16, the Horizon Initiative, and may have had a hand in its founding. The recovery effort was hindered by factional fighting within the HMF SCP. SCP-001-01 was severely injured in the resulting firefight, but was successfully stabilized and recovered along with the other subjects, and passed on to the jurisdiction of the Preservationist Faction. The individuals responsible for sheltering the SCP-001 subjects fled during the fighting and were not able to be apprehended. Interview Log 001-11-02 The following interview with SCP-001-05 was reported on... 19... You spoke last time of having a specific purpose. Could you please explain? I am here to help set things right. Go on. The world is broken, Doctor. And my brothers and sisters and I are here to heal it. 
to gather together and prepare the way for what is to come. The process has already been set in motion, though regrettably, there have been some setbacks. Please explain. SCP-001-01 He was the one who was to gather all the rest. With him now hovering between life and death, that duty falls to us, but we know only glimpses of a few others in our number. It is enough. You don't fear for his safety. Death is just another part of what is meant to be. It's nothing to fear. An admirable view of things. How did you learn of your purpose? I had a dream, portent, prophecy, hallucination. Call it what you will. It planted a seed in my head. An intuition, you might say. It was the next day I met SCP-001-01. Can you describe the dream? There was a man, a man in rich clothing, like a king or emperor. He kept saying, where is the tailor? Where is my tailor? And pacing back and forth. Each time he asked it, another voice would answer. He is close now. He is close at hand. But he did not arrive. The man became more and more upset. And as he paced, moths came and landed on him and began to eat away at his clothing. His robes began to fray and rot as more and more moths landed on him and some even bit his skin. But then the doors opened, and there arrived not one tailor, but dozens, led by the most masterful tailor in the kingdom. The king was overjoyed, for he knew he would be saved from the moths that tried to consume him. I woke up then, and I knew. He found me, and I followed him. If you'll pardon the dramatic phrasing, when all of you come together, the world will end, correct? <laughs> oh, Doctor, the world has already ended. This was to be the last war. The world's time has come and gone, and is stretching thinner by the day, until there will be nothing left but the moths. But there is still some time left. We can find each other on our own. And when that happens? Quiet days, Doctor. Quiet days and peace. Incident Report 001-05-EX Security Memetic What sword shall you choose? Date 19 Location Site 128 Coordinates Event Type LK Localized Crisis Description Event occurred upon the death of SCP-001-05 at 2212 local time. MTF squads stationed at Site-41, Site-98, and Site-203 were deployed in response. Liquidation protocols for all items within Site-128 were authorized at 2215. Resultant Anomalies UAP Self-replicating substance similar in composition to clay. Upon contact with a vertebrate organism, the substance would mold around the host, overriding the host's behavior. Without nearby hosts, Substance would spread along ground or coalesce into large masses. UAP Eight-winged entity with avian and cephalopodian traits, measuring 70 meters in wingspan and 45 meters tall, would manifest swarms of entities outwardly similar to crows or ravens, measuring approximately 3 meters in length. UAP A series of 109 great cubicubo-octahedrons measuring approximately a meter in width, Air temperature in a radius of 20 meters of the objects would rise to over 250 degrees Celsius. Affected areas would immediately cool after exiting the area of effect. Objects were capable of flight at approximately 25 kilometers an hour. Nine reported Class III biological revival scenarios. Widespread civilian reports of spontaneous ritualistic cannibalism. Anomalous weather patterns extending approximately 110 kilometers out from the initial event site. Rainfall contained high amounts of fatal pathogens, including Ebola virus, E. coli, and Variola major. Disappearance of SCP-1348. See document 001-EX. Recovery efforts. Ouroboros protocol initiated at 2223, completing at 2100. Protocol was carried out at 97% efficiency. Foundation casualties, 
1,350. Items lost, 27. Estimated civilian casualties, 10,000. Incident report, 001-012-RCEX. Security memetic, through the long night. Date, 2000. Location, Islamic Republic of Eastern Samothris. Event type, LK. Localized crisis. Description. Recovery of SCP-001-012 was engaged at 0731 local time. Subject was reluctantly cooperative. At 0743, operatives from GOI-03, the Chaos Insurgency, attacked the recovery team. SCP-001-012 was severely injured during the event, along with agents and SCP-001-012 was generally incoherent from this point, displaying signs of glossolalia. The extent of subjects' coherent statements was recorded as follows. They're hungry, you see. Gnaws and bites and claws and crunch, crunch, crunch. Old food is better than no food, see? They're very hungry and keep getting hungrier. Recovery team was attacked a second time at 0815, resulting in the death of SCP-001-012. Resultant anomalies. UAP, semi-amorphous tetrapedal entity measuring approximately 50 meters in height and 200 meters in length. Entity was resistant to conventional weaponry. UAP, Spontaneous consumption of individuals by large masses of maggots. Species unknown. Flash flooding consisting of a mixture of 2% chocolate milk, crude oil, chicken broth, and rabbit feces. Reappearance of SCP-1348. See document 001-EX for notable alterations. Recovery efforts. Nuclear deployment authorized by the Board of Overseers at 0817. Ouroboros Protocol, initiated at 0846, completing at 0730. Protocol was carried out at 61% efficiency. Notes. The Islamic Republic of Eastern Samothrace has been classified as SCP-1173 on account of reality instability caused by flaws in the operation of Ouroboros Protocol. Foundation Casualties, 8. Estimated Chaos Insurgency Casualties, 25. Estimated civilian casualties, 175,000. Document 001-EX. Security memetic. We saw them walk on clouds of meat. Test log SCP-001-361. Forward. Due to SCP-001's possible Abrahamic roots and its potent effects on religion-based anomalies of a similar origin, a test to establish if its effects have a wider base was required. SCP-361 was chosen for this test as a low-risk, non-Abrahamic religious object with easily observable effects. Begin Log SCP-001-02 is instructed to introduce a sheep's liver to SCP-361. Welcome to Horosco, we? Oh, it's you. So it would seem. Well, if you're calling, that means... Ah, hell. It's time already. Yes. Well... We suppose we should have seen it coming. Traffic has been getting very thin lately. Guess it's time to go. He will be there with us when everything is in order again. Assuming you'll be able to do it. Well, kid, we guess this is goodbye. We know we and your boss didn't always see eye to eye, but we had a good run overall. It's been fun. You'll be there, I promise. And we don't doubt for a second that you believe that. See you on the other side, kid. Or not. I can't remember the last time anyone called me a kid. Connection terminated. Closing statement. Following test 001-361, SCP-361 ceased to function. Any attempts to introduce its usual stimulant to it produced only a sound similar to that of a disconnected dial tone. Test log. SCP-001-738. Forward. SCP-738 was chosen for experimentation due to possible thematic links. No physical description of the entity, henceforth designated SCP-738-4, was provided by SCP-001-03. Begin log. Well, look who it is. 
How the hell have you been? What can I do for you? Just a message delivery, Jack. Next time you head back, tell everyone to get ready. The contract is winding down. Are you shitting me? Not pulling some sort of trickery fuckery? Not at all. Really time for the scrap, eh? Bloody asshole fuck, it's been long enough. You know what? For you? No charge. It's on me this time. Right out of the kindness of my shriveled black heart. Well, maybe not so black. <laughs> You're killing me here. See, that's why I like you. Always got a joke and a smile. Close log. Closing statement. Contract left by SCP-738-4 reads, It's on the house. X. SCP-001-03 offered no explanation as to why SCP-738-4 was referred to as Jack. SCP-738 currently displays no anomalous effects when used and has been reclassified as SCP-738-N. Test Log SCP-001-1295 Forward On the 1803, as all four instances of SCP-1295 were leaving the diner, they were addressed by an individual, later classified as SCP-001-014. Since the containment procedures for SCP-1295 did not allow for the direct intervention of Foundation personnel in this scenario, the conversation was instead recorded. Begin Log Gentlemen, if I might have a moment of your time. Why, look who's finally here. Boy, do you know how long we've been waiting for you to show up? What took you? I apologize. I was only recently made aware of my duties. Ah, don't worry about it, kid. Dwight here's just being an ass. What he meant to say is, it's damn good to finally see you. Aye, not that sitting here wasn't nice, but a man can only eat so many fruit cobblers before he gets tired of them. It's time to get back to business. That is indeed what I am here for. The time for your ride is drawing near. I was tasked with letting you know this, and asking you to begin the preparations. I was told you would know what to do. That we do, lad. That we do. I'm not one to brag, but there ain't no one in the business that knows better. I would like to remind you that we live in different times. This task requires a surgeon's scalpel, not a broadsword. You'll need to be gentle this time around. Blast. I was afraid you'd say that. Don't you worry. We'll be as gentle as anyone could ask for. I suspect we'll see you around before all this is through, my boy. You take care. Come on, lads. Time's a wasting, and we got a lot of stuff to get ready. Ride out. End log. Closing statement. All four instances of SCP-1295 proceeded to leave the diner. Following their departure, Foundation personnel detained SCP-001-014 and took him into custody without further incident. No instances of SCP-1295 returned to the diner following this conversation, or were seen since. Test Log SCP-001-1348 Forward Following the death of SCP-001-05, Site-87's Archaeological Containment Unit underwent a Class DK event, Dimensional Shift vanishing and therefore becoming inaccessible to outside access or communication. Following the death of SCP-001-012, Site-87 returned to its previous position. Upon its return, an exploration team was sent to investigate SCP-1348's containment status and discovered the following alterations to its workings. All Foundation personnel present on site at the time of its disappearance were absent, as was their personal gear, technical equipment, and food rations. Five new instances of SCP-1348-1 appeared in SCP-1348's inner chamber. Unlike the previously discovered SCP-1348-1E, these new instances appeared to be in perfect health. Said instances were found performing SCP-1348-2. The ritual designated SCP-1348-2 has been altered likely due to the presence of aforementioned instances of SCP-1348-1. Performance of the altered SCP-1348-2 by instances of SCP-1348-1 lacks the mimetic effect of its previous incarnation. Since SCP-1348-3's veil was now permanently opened, the purpose of the altered SCP-1348-2 is currently unclear. 
the inner chamber designated SCP-1348-3 was significantly altered. The decorations in the chamber, formerly all proto-Semitic style, now included designs from a much wider selection of cultures, including Mesoamerican, Proto-Indo-European, and Antarctican, in addition to designs clearly originating from a much later period than SCP-1348's supposed construction date. The veil in the center of SCP-1348-3 has been permanently opened, and was found empty except for a series of Amharic etchings on the inner side of the veil. He had suffered enough, had carried the weight of the world upon his broken back for long enough, and now comes the end, to his beauty and to the world. Whatever that end may be, know that he is free, finally slumbering in oblivion's embrace. His requiem will be sang until the unraveling. He deserves that much. No traces of radiation were found. Reclassification to Euclid pending. Test Log SCP-001-073 Forward. Due to the relative safety of interacting with SCP-073, testing with SCP-001-011 has been authorized in the hopes of establishing neutralization of SCP-076. Begin Log Hello. Have we met before? No, we haven't. You don't look like a doctor. School teacher by trade, though that's neither here nor there. You've been released from your binding. Is that so? It's been a very long time. It has. Well then, easy way to test it, if you would. SCP-073 turns head, motioning to his cheek. SCP-001-011 nods and slaps SCP-073. Action successfully makes contact. No counteraction recorded. So it is. Have you spoken with my brother yet? No, not yet. Ah, when you see him, tell him I am sorry. Close log. Closing statements. SCP-073 currently demonstrates no anomalous properties and has been reclassified as SCP-073-N. Observation is ongoing. Test log SCP-001-076. Forward. Due to the success of exposure of SCP-073 to SCP-001-011, the O5 board has granted clearance for testing to be carried out with SCP-076. SCP-001-011 was placed in the primary containment chamber and instructed to wait until SCP-076-2 emerged from SCP-076-1. Begin Log SCP-001-011 enters SCP-076's containment chamber, with instructions to wait until SCP-076-2 manifests. After 63 minutes, SCP-076-2 emerges from SCP-076-1. Upon seeing SCP-001-011, SCP-076-2 was overcome by a fit of hysterical laughter and crying for approximately 30 minutes. Has he forgiven me? He has. Close log. Closing statement, SCP-076-2 currently demonstrates no anomalous properties or violent behavior and has been reclassified as SCP-076-2-N. It has been relocated to a high security humanoid containment chamber. Document 001-IC-34. Security Mimetic, on basalt feet we stood. The following communique originated from within the leadership of GOI-16, the Horizon Initiative. The message was found alongside item E-7455 during recovery on 2000. How do you explain to someone that the world is dying and that only they may save it? We have often asked ourselves that question. During the sixty or so years since that faithful day in Jerusalem, and entertained different notions on the most effective ways to do so. Fifty years ago, we were Elijah, full of bluster and wrath, calling upon our less faithful brothers to rally to the 36's cause, using fear to further our goals. Thirty years ago, we were Isaiah, seeking to strengthen our less courageous brothers that with the conviction that our cause was just, speaking of the greatness of our task, using their newfound confidence to build an order on which our goals could stand. Ten years ago, we were Jeremiah, 
weeping at the doors of the world's great powers, pleading for them to listen. For we now understood that this task was beyond our power alone. And now? Now we are Jonah, and we are lost for words. How do we make you understand what is at stake, when the only way you could see is to let everything your organization ever did go for the word of three old men? That is too much to ask even of righteous men, and we are not yet certain you are such. All we can ask is that you listen. You have seen what the 36 can do. You have seen the way the world unravels around them, but you do not understand why. You see them as just another entry in your great book of diseases, a threat to the wholeness of the body you keep, the world. It is not so. The items and phenomena you keep hidden from the world are not diseases. They are symptoms, and you are not keeping the world healthy by masking them when the underlying condition is ignored. The problem is that this condition is chronic. The world is simply old, and the 36? They might make it young again. For them to be able to do so, you will be required to make the ultimate sacrifice. You must relinquish your identity. You were made to secure, and we are asking you to trust in the unproven. You were made to contain, and we are asking you to release. You were made to protect, and we are asking you to leave the world vulnerable. It is an impossible request, this we know, but you must fulfill it if there is to be any hope for us. Release the 36. Let them come together, let them do what needs to be done, and we shall follow. Help three old men make the world young again. Don't let it die. Well, 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 well. I feel like I'm always saying that at the end of these proposals. But what can I say? These things are crazy. I mean, that was a whole lot of documents and references and this and that. And I'm no scientist or researcher, so for me, a lot of those SCPs don't hold any meaning. Well, until I get to lecturing about them at some point, I suppose. But hopefully, you all were able to get something out of it. Still have many more proposals, and I've been told that some of the next ones coming up are quite large. So... Wow, looking forward to that. Anyways, until the next time that we meet, Knox.